Hi, One Hour Smart Home here, and today we're going to show you how to install a motion sensor light switch that will activate your lights when motion is detected. And what's really cool about this motion sensor light switch is that it has a smart light switch built into it, and it also has dimming capability built in as well, meaning that you can control this from your phone as well, and it also can dim so you can turn it down just like this. So let's get started showing you how to install this motion sensor light switch. So the first thing that we need to do to get started installing our motion sensor light switch is cut the power off at the circuit breaker for this existing switch. In order to do that, you wanna make sure that you have the switch on at the light switch on the wall, and then we're gonna to go to our circuit breaker and turn it off, and then we'll know the power is cut off when the lights are no longer on in this room. So let's go do that right now. So here we are over at the circuit breaker, and I need to find the circuit breaker that goes to those lights, so it is my basement slash garage. It's labeled number 12 here, and I'm just gonna flip that circuit breaker off. We've got the power turned off at the circuit breaker, so now we can remove this existing light switch cover plate. Just take a screwdriver and remove the two screws. We've got the cover plate off, and now we're ready to remove these two screws for the existing light switch. Now, if you've got a non-contact voltage meter or you've got a multimeter, it's a good time to just recheck and make sure the power is turned off. But if you don't have those, just make sure you left that circuit breaker off. Try the light switch again to make sure that nothing turns on. And now you can remove these two screws for the existing light switch. We've got the screws holding the light switch in place removed. So now we can pull the light switch out of the junction box and then we can inspect the wiring. Now the Leviton smart motion sensor dimmer that we are installing does require a neutral wire. So we need to check in our existing junction box to see if there is a neutral wire. So we've got our uh, hot and load wires on the switch already. So that's good. We've got these two here. And then if we look in there a little bit further, we've got these white wires here and those are our neutral wires. So we're good to go installing this Leviton smart motion sensing dimmer. So we're gonna get started with that. Now, before you do anything with the wiring, I recommend you take a picture of your existing wiring so that you know exactly what is in there. So let's just take a good look, make sure that we've got a good picture. We've got our ground wire here, and then we've got our incoming hot wire down here on the bottom. We've got up top, that's gonna to be our load wire going up to the light fixtures. And then we've got our neutral wire right here. So take a moment, take your picture, and then we're gonna start removing these wires. Now, what I always like to do is take a piece of electrical tape to mark which one of these is the hot wire, which is this bottom one down here, that's the incoming power. And then you can just leave the load wire unmarked or you could mark that as well. But I'm gonna mark my incoming hot with a little piece of electrical tape and then we're gonna remove all these wires. We've got the hot wire marked right there with a the little piece of tape. So let's remove these two screws to remove our existing wires. We've got the hot wire removed and that one is marked. Now we're gonna remove our load wire. Now it's important to note that typically your hot wire, the incoming power, is gonna be on the bottom of the switch if it was properly wired and it's a standard switch. And then at the top of the switch, you're going to have your outgoing wire that goes to the light fixtures, which is called your load wire. And that's gonna go up to your light fixtures and that's typically gonna be on the top. Now that's not always the case, but if your switch was wired correctly, that should be how it was installed. But if you're unsure, of how to identify your hot wire or your load wire, you can always seek out professional help to do this. Now we've got our last wire here, which is our ground wire. So we're gonna remove that from the existing switch. We've got all the existing wires removed from the existing light switch, and now we're ready to install our smart motion sensor light switch. So let's get this wired up. So here's the back of the Leviton D2MSD smart dimmer 
motion sensing light switch. And you can see on the back of it, we've got our load wire up here, our line wire, which is that hot wire that I marked over here with this extra piece of tape. So line or hot wire are an interchangeable term. So that black wire is gonna to go to this black wire over here. And then the other black wire, which is our load wire, which I didn't mark, that's the one that's gonna to go to our red wire there. Now you've got this GND, that stands for ground. That's our green wire down here. And then the white wire is gonna to go to the white wire that we've got in the switch box. And that's our neutral wire. And it's also labeled down here. Now the last wire is an extra wire. And that's what's called a traveler. That's for three-way switch configurations. But we're not installing this in a three-way switch configuration. We're just going to use this switch to control one set of lights that's controlled by one switch. A three-way switch is for locations where you've got two switches controlling one set of lights, like you might find a switch at the top of the stairs and a switch at the bottom of the stairs. That would be a three-way switch configuration where two light switches control one set of lights from two different locations. So let's get this wired up and I'm just gonna start with getting my line wire wired up, which is my hot wire, to the marked hot wire over here. The existing wires were bent around the existing switch, so we're just gonna straighten those out with a pair of pliers and uh, make sure that we can get those all wired up to the new wires that we've got because we're gonna be using wire nuts for those. So we need those wires to be nice and straight in order to get those twisted together. So. We're going to take all the hooks on these out. You can just do that with a pair of pliers like so. Sometimes you can do it with your fingers, but uh, it can be a little tough on your fingers if you try and do that. Now I'm going to take the switch. I've got my line wire here. That's this black wire. I'm going to take that black wire and I'm going to wire it to my line wire or hot wire that I marked over here. And just take a wire nut and wire these two together. So just twist them together until we get a nice solid connection. The next wire we've got here, that's our load wire. You can see it right there. And I'm gonna take that and I'm gonna wire that to our top black wire here. And that's the one that's going to our light fixtures from the switch. So we're gonna take that and wire these two together. So take my load wires and wire those together with a wire nut. Now we've got our green ground wire down here. And we're gonna take that green ground wire and we're gonna wire it to the unshielded copper wire here. So we're gonna wire those two together and that unshielded wire, that's my ground wire. So just take those two, wire them together and use a nut to screw together. Now the last wire I've got here, that is my neutral wire. We do need to wire that up. And we've got these existing white wires here. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take the wire knot off the existing two wires here and then we're gonna take our white wire and wire it together with those two already there. So we've got now all three of those white wires together and we're just gonna take our wire nut and we're gonna twist those right back together. Now that we've got everything wired up, all we need to do is put these wires back into the junction box. So do some wire origami to fold those back up into the junction box. Then we're gonna take our light switch and just secure it with the two screws that are provided on the switch to the existing junction box. So let's do that right now. Now we just take a screwdriver and secure these in place. Now we've got our smart motion sensor light switch installed and we're ready to put the cover plate on. So they provided one of these cover plates with the switch itself. So we're just gonna take this and uh, you can pull it apart and you put the first backer part on here and you're gonna secure that to the switch and then you're just gonna snap this part in place and it gives a really clean installation. You don't have any screws that you can see then. Now we take our cover and snap it in place. All right, now we've got our smart motion sensor light switch completely installed and we're ready to go turn the power back on at the circuit breaker and then we can get it set up on our phone so we can control it remotely. We find the circuit breaker that we turned off right here and we flip it back on. 
All right, we turn the power back on and you can see this has turned on. We've got this blinking green light, which means it's ready to set up, but we can also just turn it on and off right here from the switch, which is great. And then you've got your built-in motion sensor up here at the top and you can also dim right here. So this is a really fancy switch for the basement slash garage that I'm putting it in, but I really like this because it will save energy if I ever forget to turn my lights off in my garage, it's automatically able to turn those lights off. But what's even better is if I pull my car into a dark garage, it'll trip that motion sensor and it's going to turn the lights on without me needing to turn them on, which is really great. So a lot of applications for these and dimmer switches are now required by code in some areas of the country for bathrooms to help save energy. Depends where you're at, but it is a nice feature to not worry about leaving the lights on or turning them on when you're coming back into your house uh, when it's dark out. So let's get this set up on the app. If you haven't already done so, you're gonna need to download the Leviton app, which we've got right here. You're gonna need to set up a username and password and then log into the Leviton app. So I've already done all that, and you can see of some of my existing devices that are already on here. Now, I wanna add this device so I can control it remotely from my phone. And that's what's great about this Leviton Smart Dimmer, is that you can control it from your phone or you can just use it with the motion sensor so it'll turn on and off automatically. But there's so much functionality built into it, it really makes it great for if you want it connected or if you don't want it connected. But if you've got it connected, you're gonna have a ton of functionality and flexibility with how you can control this. And if you wanna set it up for timers or if you just wanna be able to turn it on and off from your phone as well. So let's click up here in the upper right hand corner on the plus symbol and we're gonna click on add a device down here at the bottom. Now we're installing a motion sensor dimmer switch. So let's go all the way down to the bottom and that's what we're in gonna install. Click on that and it says, before we start, is your motion sensing dimmer installed and is the status LED flashing green? Yes, it is, that's our status LED. Let's click yes, let's go. All right, now we need to select our device. It popped right up there and we're going to click next. Connecting. Choose your Wi-Fi network here. And click next. Enter your Wi-Fi password and click next. Connecting to device. Now we need to choose an icon for a device. I'm just going to choose the one that it's got there, which is a motion sensing dimmer and click save. Let's call this one motion sensor garage. And click next. Now we can choose a room for this, but I'm just going to skip this for now. Now, what's great about this smart motion sensing dimmer switch is that it does work with Amazon Alexa, Google Assistant, if this, then that, and it works with Siri. So you've got pretty much every voice assistant compatibility built into this smart dimmer switch, which is great, but you also have the motion sensing capability. We're gonna click finish now. Now, this is the home screen that pops up once we're done setting up the motion sensor light switch. Now you can see right down here at the bottom, that's my switch and I can click on it. And I can turn the dimming all the way up to 100% or I can go down to 50% right here, or I could turn this completely off. We're gonna turn it all the way up. And you can see over here on the side, I've got some lights that indicate the current dimming levels. Now I can turn this off if I click over here and it will turn completely off or I could just click right on the switch and turn it on as well. Now you've got down here a motion snooze. So if I click on that, it allows you to snooze the motion sensing for a period of time. So I could snooze it for a minute, an hour, 10 hours, 24 hours, whatever I wanted. But I don't wanna have it on motion snooze, so I'm gonna just click end motion snooze right there. If I wanna go into more device settings, I click down here at the bottom and you can see all the other settings we've got. We could change a name or we can go in here and click on our advanced settings. And then we can click on stuff like our motion sensor options, our device options, night settings, or preset light level options. So let's click on device options here. And what you've got is a locator mode. So that will light up at night and you can choose that to be on or off. You've got your LED bar behavior, so you can customize that how long you want that to stay on after you've 
press the switch and it dims or it turns on. And you can go back here and you can click on your motion sensor options. This is what's great. You can turn this on or off. So you can enable it or disable it. And you can set the amount of time you want that light to turn off at. So you could have it for one minute if you want to save more energy. Or you could have it up to 30 minutes or an hour. Whatever you want here. So for mine, I'm going to leave it at 10 minutes. I think that's a good compromise of what we're going to use it for here in the garage slash basement. Now, down at the bottom, you also have some other modes. So we've got an occupancy mode and a vacancy mode. Occupancy mode will automatically turn the lights on when motion is detected and will turn lights off when no motion is detected. In vacancy mode, it requires you to manually turn the lights on, but will still turn the lights off when no motion is detected. So I'm going to use occupancy mode because what I want to happen is when I come into this room, whether it be from the house into here or from the garage into here, I want this to be able to turn on when motion is sent. So we're going to leave it right at occupancy mode. Now down at the bottom, you've got a motion LED feedback. So you can disable that or enable it. I'm going to put that on and all it's going to do is let you know with a little LED light in here that motion was detected and then it's going to flick right on. So seems to me like a good option to have. So we're going to go back out of here. We're going to click down here at night settings and see what we've got in there. Now at night, uh, I can have it set to turn on the room lights. So any lights that are connected to this will turn on. But you also have a little guide light on this. I mean, this light switch is packed with features. So you could have it set to just turn on the guide light that will let you see a little bit of space near the light switch instead of the room lights. But we're going to leave it on with room lights right there. And then you've got your night preset light level. So you could set this uh, to whatever you wanted, enabled or disabled. But we're going to leave it just how it is. So we're not going to worry about that at all. But we can go back here one more time. And then we've got our preset light level options here. Uh, you can have it return to a previous brightness or a specified brightness. So if you always wanted it at 100%, uh, you could leave it on that. So we're going to do that. I want it to 100% whenever I come in here. And then it'll always turn on there rather than going back to like 50% if that's what you had it dimmed to before. Now let's go back again and look at what else we've got. We've got our bulb options here. So you can just tune it for different types of uh, LEDs or if you've got uh, fluorescence or CFLs uh, or non dimmable or incandescent light bulbs, just makes it work better with the switch. If you tune it, you've got a fade on rate and a fade off rate. So that's how quickly the lights will turn on or off. And then you've got your dimming range. So here you can set it so it has a maximum minimum level. We'll leave it right where it's at. And then let's just go back. So thanks for watching this video on how to install a motion sensor light switch. Really like this switch. It's got a ton of features packed into the device. So really easy to use. You've got dimming, you've got motion sensing, you've got smartphone capability, you've got voice assistant capability. This thing really has it all. So I really have liked that switch so far. Now we've got a link down below for this light switch. This is a Leviton Smart Motion Sensing Dimmer, also known as a Leviton D2 MSD. And we've got links in the description below. So check those out. So thanks for watching and we'll see you next time.